Hey, this is Kazem. I'm currently right here at Canine Caviar. The lovely people here invited me over for the last couple days to come check out their company, their products, their proteins, their dogs, and learn more about this very local company based right here in Riverside, California. I, it was a perfect opportunity to learn more about the science and the people who really put a lot of time and care into their dog food. It was just a very small part of this family-owned company and so it just gives you a perspective about who you're buying from and who you can talk to on the phone, right? And so if you're someone who has a puppy, a dog, I would seriously come and recommend and check this company out. It's actually really cool and anytime you can call them, you can ask them questions, their website's really easy, their social media, you can go ahead and DM them, and they'll reply, bam! And so it's just an overview of this beautiful company and the amazing product that they're shipping out to you guys. So go check it out. Hello everybody, uh, I'm Cousin. Uh, I make YouTube videos. Uh, this is Jeff. Yeah, hi, I am Jeff Baker. I'm with Canine Caviar Pet Foods. Jeff is the founder of Canine Caviar. Correct. Uh, before you started this company, what did you do? Yeah, I'm a uh, research scientist. I was a research scientist in Germany. I worked for a company that uh, we would do uh, stem cell research, parentalian injectables, cancer research. We did it basically whatever, right? So you did almost everything. We did a broad spectrum. Uh, this is Gary, the co-founder of Canine Caviar. I'm, I'm Gary, uh, the co-founder with Jeff Baker, and uh, we started Canine Caviar 20 plus years ago. And just all for the love of the animals. Awesome. So tell me more about how you and Jeff met. We actually met back in high school. Okay. Um, we were lab partners for physics. Right. And became friends and continued to be friends I mean, well beyond. Later I started actually dating his sister, not even knowing they were brother and sister. Oh wow. And uh, he was away at school in Germany. In Germany, you had a Great Dane, correct? I had a, yeah, a Great Dane that I had uh, over there with me. He would go into anaphylactic shock if he was bitten by a bee or an ant or a spider. And what pursued you to think, okay, my dog is getting bit by a bee, how can I prevent this? Yeah, so uh, actually one day Bayer had come to our company and asked us to create a flea medication. And uh, since I was the only scientist in the building with a dog, uh, my boss asked me if I would, uh, would take over the project and obviously I was happy to do so. Okay. Um, and when we did that, we had to draw the blood from my Great Dane. And uh, we realized at that time that he wasn't allergic to the venom, but he was allergic to the preservatives that were in the food at that time. Because in the in the 90s, all pet food was in paper bags. Okay. And this is one of the her biggest hurdles and challenges we had when we actually started our company. Let's go back to your Great Dane for a second. He lived to the age of 17, right? That's correct. And so, did you think that if you never found canine caviar, you started giving him better food, do you think he would have um, passed a little bit earlier? He definitely, he would have passed earlier. He definitely wouldn't have lived as old as he did. Okay. Because in fact, at the age of 14, we actually created our special needs formula specifically for him. Okay. What made you decide that I want to start canine caviar? Yeah, so the main impetus was is that the, my field of research uh, stuff but he wasn't really valuable in the United States. I didn't really want to go work for a U.S. pharmaceutical company because, you know, my whole philosophy is working from the inside out, not from the outside in like we are here in America. So my mother actually convinced my brother-in-law and I that we should start the pet food company. So we know that Jeff, he um, came back to America, and so what motivated you to jump in and help him out and start a start canine caviar? Well, as he's continued making the food himself he said there's a business here there's a true yeah uh benefit to people yeah, through uh, a potential yeah exactly yeah and so with that being said he started working and you know obviously this became so much work to make the food get the food to the customers yeah and then also go try to sell it market it and right. everything else and uh, we were talking and I was in the industry of uh, construction, which that's been the family trade. Okay. And there's highs and lows, and you know, I started talking, and I, I just love dogs. It's, I've always had a dog; he's always my best friend. Yeah. So uh, we test marketed the food uh, actually at the uh, local uh, markets, uh, so, you know, like uh, Orange County uh, Marketplace. Yeah. And uh, people came in, and we got amazing feedback. Right? They just say, you know, we have these pH test kits that people can use, so they can test their dogs, uh, your dog's urine. Over the different dogs you've had growing up, have you noticed that difference between the canine caviar diet and other? Yes, absolutely. Dogs. What I really notice and remember is when a kid, the dog's skin was just dry and flaky. Okay. And it was like almost scabby-ish. Yeah. Or scaly, you know, like dandruff. Right. And as time's progressing, like in ours, I mean, the coats are beautiful. I mean, they're just yeah gorgeous. Yeah. And the teeth are clean, and I mean, the eyes are crystal clear. You started small. 
you started, very small. You I mean, a ten by ten booth at the uh, at the Orange County Marketplace. Yeah. So this is a very small grown company. They're all about quality, not quantity. Correct? That's correct. So and tell me about your um, tell me about your operations now. Um, your are you do you use uh, plants in the U.S. around the world? How how's your business running right now? Yeah. So one of our main philosophy we have a bunch of different uh, not a bunch of different philosophies. Our one philosophy is just you know to provide a, 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 a diet the way that was intended for a wolf. But uh, we believe in sustainability, right? So right. we don't use things that are not sustainable, right? We would never use a North American bison, or we would never use like uh, tuna or something like this, right? Because they're not sustainable ingredients anymore. So wherever it would be indigenous to that region, that's where it comes from. How does your day to day evolve right now? What's your focus at living the company? Uh, today, right now, today, my focus is back being in the stores. Okay. Our, our greatest tool is hearing from the customers. Okay. And we don't like to hear it second hand or third hand. We, we really, truly, I mean, even though we have a corporation and we have people in the office, people in the warehouse, all sorts of moving parts, all right. Jeff and I still like to hear from the in consumer. Straight from the consumer, right? right? I believe you've been years of going to uh, stores and learning and meeting customers within the stories of the difference of their old food versus their new food. Originally, people weren't used to premium foods. They didn't know what all natural was or what holistic was. And now, now, now they're really learning about alkaline. Okay. Um, and that's the biggest thing is education. Okay. So over time, the, the end consumer is becoming more educated. And with the internet, it's even made it even better. The biggest thing we always say is, you know, do the research and you have questions to ask. Jeff and I will get on the phone or an email. I mean, yeah, know, absolutely. We don't have other people answer our questions for us. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you.